Hello and welcome to ELT Under the Colors Teaching Methodology. Today we are going to be looking at a new style of lecturing uh, that's taken, well hopefully going to take the world by storm. First, some introduction. I'm Neil, our team teacher. Hello everybody, it's Professor Rich. I can't wait to see how great, I mean, people pay all this money to go to university, so there is no doubt that we're going to see top quality teaching today, folks. Oh, yeah, yes. we, we've got the, this standard idea of, uh, of, of lectures, this talk, uh, chalk and talk, the sage on a stage, um, and it's been around since ancient times, yet there's this new thing uh, out there, this peer discussion. Um, mm. Do you think it will catch on? New, new, new as in uh, 1990s, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm going, I'm a radio guy, so it Revolutionary. goes 70s, 80s, 90s till now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a rev revolutionary, revolutionary 30 years old technique, which is still not employed in 99.999999% of lecture theatres, but we're excited about seeing it. We know a little bit about it being uh, community of language teachers where we do employ techniques similar to this, but it is practically unheard of in university lecture theatres, let's be honest. So yeah, it's going to be cool. I'm, uh, I want to see how to do it right. Yeah, so let's jump in. There's a new type of lecture that has been developed in the 1990s by a Harvard professor, Eric Mazur, and it's called Peer Instruction. It's a student-centered approach that involves students preparing to learn outside of class by doing pre-class readings and answering questions about those readings using another method called just-in-time teaching. It's basically a flipped classroom. However, during the lectures, there's a pedagogical system where teachers repeatedly ask multiple choice concept uh, checking questions during the class. And students reply on the spot with these wireless clickers and these devices, which the teacher quickly reviews and assesses uh, based on the feedback from the clickers um, whether more explanation is needed before moving on to the next concept. You, you see he's got this um, peer instruction. Um, so he's trying a different method and I, I find it very interesting. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And it's interesting you, in your little uh, blurb there, you called it concept checking questions, but it's a different kind of concept checking question than what we have to use in language teaching, because in language teaching, they kind of uh, train us to make these kind of simple binary choice, you know, is it a pen or is it a banana? Are you reading or speaking? Are you working with two people or three people? Those kind of instruction checking questions, sorry. And concept checking questions the same. Is it the past, the present? Is it imaginary? Is it real? We ask about conditionals, for example. Mm -hmm. But when you have that sort of option with that voting device, there's some argument to say that then you can really ask that, that taboo stigmatized question that language teachers always want to ask, which is, do you understand? Does everyone understand? You know, you can actually <laughs> yeah. do that with the clicker because it loses that kind of that kind of shame of wanting to be the person who puts their hand up and says, "No, I don't." And also, it's the fact that he has this kind of range. Then you can have like absolutely understand, understand pretty well, don't really understand, and completely don't understand. And then you can see like this sort of average that's developing. I really like it. I mean, I think it would even be useful to have something like that in a language teaching classroom. I know you can do things with Kahoot and stuff like that, but just the way that it was done there, especially considering that, you know, it's so kind of, I mean, we're talking 30, when, when, when was it developed? The 90s, 30 the years 90s, ago. The 90s, yeah, 30 years ago. Yeah, so it's 30, 30 years out of date. And I, I'm thinking like, oh, I want those clickers, you know? Yeah, but um, you know, we, we have these clickers nowadays. We just call them, smartphones uh we, yeah you know, but that yeah but that's the someone that's just the needs thing, to develop a program where they just you know they sign into the room and go here's the options it appears on the screen and bump a b c 
Yeah, we well, they, do they, have, they have them. We do it in cinemas. You know, where you do the, before the movie comes on, he, he asks you a question on the screen and you, I don't know if you have that in Canada, we, we do that. It's kind right, of right, like right. a play thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's basically Kahoot, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's like a kind of Kahooty type thing. And, yeah. and you can do you can do that. But I'm hesitant to say that, <clears throat> especially if you're doing something like giving instructions or something like that, I'm hesitant to bring mobile phones into the equation because there's such a distraction that I, I wouldn't necessarily trust that having mobile phones out and on the desk that students would necessarily just be using them for the clicker. Yeah. And that's why I said that before about, oh, I actually want the clicker. You know, <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I, wa I don't want the new technology. I want the old technology from 30 years ago. But anyway, the point is the whole, the whole idea is a good one. There's no reason at all why this shouldn't be in every lecture theater in the world, really, is there? Yeah. I mean, why not? I, What's I, to I, lose? It's, it's so very helpful um, for not just the students, for the lecturer, because then they, they know if they need to give more detail, they need to, oh, you need to come up with a parable or something like that, like Jordan Peterson did. Um, and kind of go into more explanations before you can move on because it's really important that you set those foundations before you build upon them um mm. we can actually watch uh, uh his lecture if you want yeah let's uh, yeah let's, should let's, we dive let's in take a look at an example an electric field as well as a magnetic field initially they're not moving but i'm going to turn on the electric field here and i'm actually going to put some uh, tree pollen which you can hopefully see. Whoa, that's a bit much, but you get the picture. You see that they're rotating in a clockwise sense. So the question is now, what is happening here? Is it the positive ions that are causing this motion and carrying along the pollen? Or is it the negative ions, right? If I turn off the electric field, then there is no electric field, nothing is moving. This will come slowly to rest. As I turn on the electric field, the ions here will be accelerated in the electric field. As they start moving in the electric field, they feel the effect of the magnetic force, and that is what makes them rotate. So you have to see whether it's the positive or the negative ions, or both, that carry the pollen along. Negative, negative, negative. Don't get to see the answer. So take a minute to think about it. <laughs> your... Where's your clicker? I don't know. I need one there. Pretty sure it's negative. And he just leaves it hanging and they're talking with each other in a lecture. Oh. They're, yeah. they're giving their answers. They're like, oh, what do you, oh, what man, do you think? Yeah. And That's brilliant, isn't it? It's like a CLT class, totally. In a lecture theater. Yeah. In a lecture theater. I, I mean, it's not. I like how they're, they're like trying to, they're, it's like Talking TV yet. wrote, they're like, oh, do I need to get it close? <laughs> Your own answer. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, um, the, it's not unheard of that, 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 a peer discussion is is uh, is used in lectures, but it's just so rare. It's just yeah, so rare. Which is crazy that that is like that. Yeah. I, I just look, they, they sticking their arms out. They're like, oh, does it, it needs to get a bit closer. What's going on with that? But that's kind of the problem with the technology as well. Is yeah, yeah, if they're not accustomed to it, that's why I was like, oh, smartphones no, possibly. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, back back in the day, it was it was an issue. Yeah. Still need, uh... We used to we used to do it at the summer school when we had the 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 big uh, assembly hall. Everyone in there, we'd I get we'd get a um, a Kahoot up on the screen, and it used to actually overload the Wi-Fi because you'd get two hundred and fifty students all logging uh... into the same Wi-Fi. <laughs> <clears throat> About a fifty-fifty split between two answers. Ooh, tasty. I'll let you guess which ones. It's like Noel Edmonds. It's oh, deal or no yeah. deal. <laughs> <laughs> or a Chris Tarrant. Do you want to call a friend? Is that your final answer? 
Go ahead. Check with your neighbor and see if you can agree. You should. You should. You should. I so, um, it should be. It should be like you. If you want to change your answer now, you can push the button again. <laughs> I, I think that's more or less kind of what he did, because they've gone the 50-50, and then he's like, yeah. why is 50-50? Do you want to talk a little bit more with your... <clears throat> yeah, yeah, your it's true, people? actually, yeah. 50-50 <laughs> and then phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great, though, because look how they're thinking. They're like, hold on, wait, why is that? And the more that you are thinking about this the more it, you take ownership and the more you're invested the more you're going to learn yep no doubt about that wow. such a such a great example of a, a lecture isn't it I have no interest in that kind of. I like physics, but I have no interest in that kind of physics. But I want to go there and like see what people are saying. So it's going down, right? So we have a, a, basically an E field that points in. This is what it should look like. There's a current that way, right? There's energy. Oh, and he gets to go around <laughs> and talk to them individually where they're like, if they feel a little bit stuck. I wonder if he's got a background as a language teacher. I cross B. I don't know. It's amazing. I, I'm, I, I'm astounded. I cross B, so I is inward, right? B is. And the thing is, maybe he, if he was smart, and I think he probably, he probably does this. He probably can have an idea of roughly where these people are that are going got in the wrong answer so maybe you can go over to them and you know like hey what's, what's your thinking here and he is down so the force at the bottom would be clockwise can you do that one more time in the negative lines both have a current that goes Inward, right? So let's look at the bottom of those two circles. The current goes up, right? Up. The magnetic field is into the plane of that drawing, right? Into the plane of that How screen. Are you doing your hand again? Sorry, current up, at that. Okay, magnetic so current field magnetic into field. the screen. You see? So she's kind of like a, I don't know, it's kind of debunked, but kinesthetic learner. And I know that's kind of debunked, but you know, some people need kind of more of a that comprehensive well she's, visual she's, she's, she's and copy she's copying what he's doing i mean he's 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 kind of demonstrating it with his hand that's what kids do they they model you know mm. and she's trying to un get in his head yeah and if it's just lecturing it's really hard to just you wouldn't get that interaction yeah, yeah totally So please enter your answers. Okay. Yeah, that's the sort of like 10 seconds, everybody, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So Rich, the, he's... Rich has just completely lost interest in the pedagogy of this. He's just like, I want to know the answer. <laughs> just I kind of do, actually. I just want to know if I was right with my random guess. I didn't realize it was quite as complicated as what they were all talking about, like planes and fields and stuff. I thought it was just a case of, oh, yeah, electricity causes negative ions to move. So, come to some agreement, so I guess with with magnetic left, fields, so it becomes a little bit more complicated. Rich, stop learning. Stop. <laughs> you can't help it, right? You just like you want. You, we want to talk about it. You want okay. to talk about it. Well, yeah. we're supposed to be focusing on how how this is as a from a teacher point of view, but you just get sucked in. Let's see. Okay, so we started with about a 50-50 distribution on choices one and two, and... Um, for $16,000? Right we're at one-third for one, one-third for two, and one-third for three. <laughs> Clearly, we need to do some Jokes more thinking. Jokes as well. More thinking and talking about that. So I've started by making a drawing here. A top view of the bottom yeah. of what we see on okay. the screen here. So, so he's, he's, he's going into a bit of test, he's test here, isn't he? He's basically, this is, he's being informed by his device that actually no one's got a clue because now they're split all three ways. 
I'm so, so glad that you said that. I'm so glad that you said that. Test teach test. This is okay. it, it's a brilliant example of it. Right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it definitely is. And just the clickers in general really enable to because one of the problems with test teach test is that in a lot of language classrooms, it's it's kind of it's a bit sort of pseudo test teach test because often you're kind of basing it on like CCQs of like one student or examples of one student. It's difficult to get the snapshot. Yeah. But when you have the clickers, you're getting everyone. Yeah. So, and it's instantaneous. So it's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Is there, is there more to see here? If we kind of. That, that's, that's more or less it. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's. I mean, uh, for, for a lecture. Yeah. It's brilliant, for, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, like, if I was in those lectures, oh my God, to be, I'd be so enthused. Um, you know, it it engages the students. The students mm. uh, engage in uh, interaction with each other as well, with the peer discussion. So it mm. builds not just knowledge base, but uh, a sense of kind of community as well, and ownership on the the lang uh, the the information mm. that you're uh, obtaining um mm. and it you know with that it, it, the discussion allows him to walk around and do quick yeah. on the spot test you know with the statistics you know maybe he can use that to identify the weaker students that he can go and help um mm. you know it's just it, it's it's phenomenal it's amazing it's yeah. outstanding i've not got enough superlatives to say that's just the best i just yeah, i don't I have mean, the words it's clearly very dense and tricky material and difficult concepts to understand and he's really making it engaging when you could certainly imagine someone else teaching this and just saying look this is what it is deal with it you know this is what it is this is why it is write it down learn it but he's not doing that it's really, really, really cool. Um, I'd love to have this guy on the show. I've just, I've just noticed that he's a Harvard professor, so yeah. maybe he's in pretty high demand there. Um, might not quite find the time to come and join us on our little educational podcast, but you never yeah, know. Doctor Mazza, on, if you're watching Dr. this, we are just in awe of what you've come up with, and you know, we'd love to have you on the show. Uh, pick your great brain, to... and you know, why? Uh, yeah. you know, find, find out why. Uh, why aren't more? Uh, teachers lecturers using this it could be methodology. quite interesting for him because he probably spends most of his time talking about physics yeah so to come and talk about the pedagogy the educational methodology that he's employing where that came from why did he decide to do that why did he decide to do that could have just kicked back and done what every other or what the majority of other lecturers do at university so why why decide to make this effort and use these pedagogical pedagogical devices to make things better for your students so i'd like to know where the motivation and interest and the background of that comes to did he do a bit of reading about pedagogy did he does he have a background in some other teach some pre-university teaching yeah i'm not seeing any of that on um his wikipedia page so i would say that the guy is phenomenally smart and if you are an engaged teacher, and I'm going to say it, a good teacher, you are looking at ways to best educate your students. You're looking at ways to um, more clearly, more regularly be able to convey the knowledge that you want and you want to know that they are getting it. And for me, this feels like a... a an almost a, a natural evolution of lecturing of what he's doing he's he's using technology he's going hmm maybe how can i use this technology to know what the students know so i can teach them better that's what it seems to me i i, I they mm. kind of come to this as a, a natural in a natural way through enthusiasm yeah. for learning or maybe maybe frustration with not knowing if yeah. the students get the the ideas or not but yeah regardless it's it, it this is how i i feel lectures uh should be given mm. especially nowadays with access to technology yeah well it seems like he actually went on and developed a product in 2013 called learning catalytics 
which uh, does use integrated technology. So you use a tablet or whatever. Seems to have a, seems to have advanced actually in complexity. Sit from just you know a clicker with voting. Uh, just makes the whole thing interactive, and he sold it to Pearson Education, um, and uh, they they now sell they they sell it as a product now. Um, yeah, Pearson acquired it in 2013, so he probably started it before then. So he really did. He's put it into action. I've never come across this before. Learning catalytics, and obviously Pearson are quite heavily involved in uh, language teaching, but um, I haven't I haven't come across this uh, particular implementation um but it, yeah it looks it looks very good it looks interesting it'd be absolutely fantastic to um talk to him about it and i think it's needed and it's lacking in uh, on having having been on a higher education campus quite recently i can see that I, I can confidently say that i saw very little of this in action so if you're looking for more of my stuff then you want to go to teamteacherchina.com got a lot of materials powerpoints you can download and use instantly in your classroom and um, we've got those materials uh, on a youtube channel as well where we've got videos where we teach you about how to use those videos um teen teacher english where we take those materials put them into self-study videos and we also have team teacher baby where i take my experience as a teacher and put that into parenting um professor rich so you can find me at, uh, if you do a YouTube search for Pog Space UK, you can get the latest hot takes in all the latest gaming news. Pog Space UK. Uh, you can also check me out at youtube.com slash Professor Rich, which is a YouTube channel I don't particularly do anything with at the moment, but who knows, might do some more stuff in the future. I also do weekly live streams with Oxford Online English. Feel free to pop by Wednesdays, 2 p.m. UK time. Finally, Please feel free to email us at elt under the covers gmail.com. Should you wish to contribute anything at all, recommend someone to come on the show, even, which is something we had recently. Someone contacted us to recommend someone else coming on the show. And you can come on the show yourself. Don't be shy. Get in touch. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Thank you. Smash that like button. <laughs>